If you're not gonna be smart, you're gonna be strong. Never mind the crazy camera angle. We're gonna try to proactively shoot more videos and whatnot. Uh, I just suck at it straight up. I gotta get better at it. We got field one. This is about a month old. And then we have like field two. This is our pepper trials. And as you can see, they're getting pretty big, almost ready to trellis. But I'm letting the wind kick them around. There's like a theory. Uh, you go rough up your plants. I don't know if it's like bro science. Over here, we're doing soilless or near soilless mixture. Just a simple cocoa core, carbonized rice hull or rice. And then we're doing a uh, chicken. It makes a really easy, dense medium about, about 10 to 15 liters. So not too bad. Found a sweet caterpillar over here somewhere. It's like super bright. Look at this caterpillar. On to the greenhouses. It's been so hot, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit inside these things. It's been ridiculous. So I've been dying. So we're going to try to bag everything up. I'm just going to try to record all the stuff and the processes that we're doing. And then eventually I'll upload just a bunch of videos so people can binge watch and uh, see what we've been doing. So in here, we're mixing under the shade. So we mix everything here, put it in bags, and then we go into there. You can start seeing me laying out bags. So that's the finished product right there. We've got our protective kitty cats. These are the best rat field mice deterrent you can see. Here that one has eaten it all. They've made friends. They've made friends. So you got a good little partnership there, little monsters. So we'll go over here. And never mind the mess, we're really in the process of making this way more beautiful than it is. But production farms normally start off like an ungodly mess. And then eventually over the years, we make it look really nice. Order does matter. Cleanliness definitely matters. We're very clean. But sometimes, you know, you just get really tired in the heat. So what we're doing here is we're doing five rows, doing plastic mulch. The reason we're not landscape fabricating and well, I'm, I'm too cheap to gravel the whole place. It'd probably be like, I don't know, 50 cubic meters, somewhere in that area, at maybe three inches, six inches. You wanna have enough so it really drains through. You don't wanna really capture. So uh, eventually we'll, uh, we'll do that. So now we're setting up here with bags. So we have our new irrigation. I'll show that later on as I install it. But we have our, our header line. We have one meter in, one meter on the side, and then I just line the bags. So in between bags is 40 centimeters. And then in between the bags in row is only gonna be 30 centimeters. The plants, we're gonna do two plants a bag. I'll show that over here. We're gonna do two plants a bag. They're gonna only be 20 centimeters from each other. They're gonna look like this. This is my example. This is proof that you can grow things really close together and do it so you can see the bag. Compare it to like that little bottle right there. It's maybe like six, eight inches or so. So this is what it's gonna look like. We roll down the sides here because as the plant grows up, I'm going to uh, mulch it and then top coat with like vermicast or some other thing or just anything else to provide more organic material. But as you can see, the mixture is super nice right here. Never mind my hand super nice so that it's it's easier to let the roots grow so these guys have been good they actually got attacked by uh, mites in the nursery but just due to the hardiness and nutrient this one actually got topped you can kind of see it right there it got topped um, and then just because the way we feed it we care for the plants and then boom I put these guys in the bag just sprayed them every day and then they've, they've been really good they bounce back really well so I've been really impressed with the mixture. So that was a green light to now uh, scale up into, never mind my now gene, to scale up into this nonsense that I've got myself in. So now um, I wanted this done like two weeks ago. We just got other projects that are always taking us away. So now we're gonna set it up here. So I'm just gonna probably record me moving uh, probably about 150 bags a row, not too much because again, we're doing two plants a bag. So I'm probably gonna get about 1400 to 1500 plants in the greenhouse. But one thing we're doing differently is that one, we're changing the soil, so no soil issues. Uh, we really didn't have that much problems here, but in greenhouse two, we have a lot of soil issues and we're giving ourselves more space to bring 
wheelbarrows and carts down the rows of the, the part for easier harvest, more room to spray. That's one of the biggest feedbacks that we've had is if we spray the tree, whether it's like foliar or anything else like that, then you need as much space as you can and it just makes a better presentation. We think that we can grow a better yield if we increase the, the spacing. So we didn't worry about uh, pulverizing or stamping these down with like a concrete uh, thing and whatnot, no need for that. So we're just gonna grow it up. And our trellising system this time, because I think it's one of the more important things that people really, really don't spend enough time on is trellising and tying it up. We found that it looks nice in YouTube videos to do this overhead, but unless you're a professional um, greenhouse production thing where you're getting 30, 40 kilos of plant and you're pretty much in the Netherlands or Canada or US or whatnot, then it's really not worth the time or the labor to get it done. You spend too much time, it doesn't really work out as well. So the simplest solution is bamboo. So we have bamboo. So every foot that this grows will become a notch. All the way up, this is only five feet. Um, so I need seven foot poles. So two feet in the ground, five feet above ground. And, and my other theory with this is that if I can put two plants a bag, then there'll be uh, less root mass, but they will eventually, because it's uh, cocoa coir, that they will ball out and this thing will just be nothing but a gigantic root ball. But because plants, it's weird, plants can sense each other, they can talk to each other through their roots. I'm not making this up. It's really, really crazy in, in how this works. But I, I want them to purposefully stunt themselves at about five feet. I want them to say, all right, I've expanded this entire bag and now I'm done. And then I'm just gonna just be a happy little plant. I'm just gonna produce and produce and produce. And that I think will actually provide the best results for uh, greenhouse production here in the Philippines. Because again, we're fighting just elements that when we talk about like um, sun and whatnot, it's nothing compared to the United States, even Florida, it just does not compare. I don't know if I have my uh, temperature gauge I set up in here, but <laughs> if it's still working or didn't get burned out, I think on average, when we had like a nice summer day, it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit, if that. And then if you combine that in with a bunch of vegetation and a bunch of plants, it can really be overwhelming to where you can only work in the greenhouse. Yeah, right now. There we go. 45% humidity, 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's about 1 p.m. So crazy in that sense. So the other thing too, we're not doing landscape fabric. We're not doing any of that gravel. Gravel would be nice, but it's just really expensive and it's just not really worth it. We're still trying to make sure that we can yield a significant volume of peppers and whatnot. So I'll, we talked to a bunch of other farmers. They landscape their fabric. It does look beautiful. And it's like one of those like really, it looks great. I mean, it looks great. If it looks great, then it's going to be great, right? At least, at least that's the theory. Uh, kind of like the way uh, Americans pick their bananas. They want that nice, bright, uh, yellow banana with no dots or anything else, but sometimes they're not the most flavorful, right? So same thing here. We want to find out what's the best method to grow uh, peppers. And I think that, that the easiest way to do that is to not allow any other rats or anything. So if you landscape fabric here, the rats will come in or the field mice will come in because we have, we're surrounded by other farms. And when they turn over their crops, the rats will come into your greenhouse. They'll make a little home because you have food, water, and shelter all inside. It's like a buffet for these little guys. And then they will burrow into the plastic mulch. That's also what's happening in a greenhouse too, is that they're burrowing in where you get the benefit of uh, mulching, which provides moisture trapping and, and temperature control. But at the end of the day, you're gonna have rats and you don't wanna invite rats. So when we talked to a bunch of other people that were landscape fabric their greenhouse, they were like, don't do that. It's a silly idea. So we're only using the plastic mulch to stop the roots. So once the roots come there, they kind of, what is called air pruning. Once they hit the air, they'll just stop for themselves. I don't know if it's like hundred percent true, but I've, I've seen it on some um, seedling trays and I've seen that, that they will actually naturally prune themselves out. And what I'm thinking is that if I just spend a little bit of money on just a plastic mulch, they grow down, they touch it, they drain out. And then what happens 
is that they stop and they just continue expanding inside that bag. And that's a 15 liter bag that's more than enough. You need about three kilos volumetrically of plant of, of soil matter or organic matter to actually put into the bag. So I did about roughly six kilos. Now, of course, when we start adding water and we start saturating it, Coco Coir can hold like five times its weight in water and that's gonna be saturation points. But what's gonna happen is that we're going to be able to produce the maximum yield that we can. This is actually an Indonesian and Malaysian method when they grow their, uh, their sealy uh, with a C instead of an S. Uh, they grow a lot of that stuff and they, all, they put two plants a bag and then they actually elevate their plant bags up high to even help with uh, post-production. Most greenhouses elevate their stuff just so people don't have to bend down because the first like three feet of your pepper plant is normally not productive or you've removed the first pepper blower so that there's no uh, need. So if you elevate everything up, so that's what we're doing. We're doing a bunch of science here, quasi science. And then we're trying to figure out what's the best way to grow inside this. But I think it's gonna work pretty good. We've got all the conditions right. I think we have everything set up. Uh, a little bit about on irrigation, I mentioned that. So in the center, if you could imagine this i'd move over a bag imagine four bags there and right in the center is an x and then we're going to have just little drip tubes connect to each bag normally you would do two spikes per bag but based on how i can do it i can probably put one spike in the center and then let it uh irrigate from there and if i need to add more drip spikes then i will and you get about a liter of spike per hour so that should be more than enough to saturate the bag if you're watering every day so every week it should be pretty good so with that, I'm going to put this down. I'm just going to watch me move a bunch of bags and then it'll be pretty good. Also, this is a great tool. So when you're lazy and hot, you can measure out your spacing of your bags in between the rows. So you don't have to waste a lot of time going back and wondering if this is a foot or not a foot. So you just lay it right out. And then right into there is a bag. And then we've created an assembly line. You get really strong in agriculture. You've been lazy, you get really strong. Could have probably made like the wheelbarrow pathway, but yeah, you know, learning. You know, there's a saying. If you're not going to be smart, you're going to be strong.